Fire away. Good afternoon, Nigel. Um, Good afternoon. Most importantly, I'd like an update on, on Nathan, please. How's he after Sunday's injury? Um, well, it was, a, it was a pretty nasty one, wasn't it? It was... Um, uh, it looked... It, it looked at the time quite uh, quite a, a, a serious one, but look, all we'll do is we'll 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 follow the um, you know the players' uh, return uh, return to to match protocols. I mean, and that's really the the bottom line. His his um, uh, his well being is paramount in this and. I think what's most important is that first and foremost he he continues to have tests which have so far come back very positive. So um, you know, we, we we don't have uh, concerns too much about that. But you know it, it, that's two really heavy um, challenges that he's had in a relatively short period of time. So I think we've got to be very very careful and mindful that his health is is the most important thing in this. And when you're a robust, tough player like Nathan Baker, are injuries like this inevitable, or can be anything be done to kind of prevent this from happening in the future? Um, I, he's he's just a very committed player. So when when you consider um, the one that he <coughs> sustained at, uh, at at West Brom, he's, he's I mean, even when he came back from that into training, first day he's just he, he's himself. He he goes and attacks the ball so. Um, it's it's just unfortunate. Uh, it, it's uh, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want want to take away one of his main strengths, and that is his uh, his bravery and his he just sees the ball and attacks the ball. So it happens. It happens, unfortunately. And in terms of your other missing players, are any of them at all likely to be in contention for Saturday? No, no, not at the moment. Uh, although. Both Matty and um, Andy King have trained today with us, so they've been uh, full training with us, so uh, and, and have come through okay. But it's really important that that we make sure that they they are able to to stay back when they come back. So uh, yeah, there's always a temptation to try and um, to rush important players back. But I, I have to, I have to make sure that my decision-making um, process is, is is very much driven by uh, expert advice, and and so you know um, I won't be rushing them back. A welcome week, I imagine, than um, without any midweek fixtures. The championships relentless at the best of times. Yeah. What, what, if anything, did you learn from your last outing at Sheffield United on on Sunday? That we are very frustrating as a as a as a side. That our inability to um, have consistently good performances is remains elusive for us. But I, uh, but I also recognise. Exactly where we are, and, and and I think it's the the players are disappointed as well that they were unable to to um, play at the level that they showed in the previous week uh, in both our home games, uh, where I thought against two decent sides we we performed pretty well. Um, the Sheffield United game represented a good opportunity for us. Because I I don't remember um, being involved in a game there where it's been so flat at the at the start of a game and we were un unable to to uh, take advantage of that. Although we had we had opportunities to open them them up that we turned down, and so um, yeah, it remains a frustration. But um, now it's about preparing for our, uh, our game against Derby. And making his return from injury lately has been Antoine Semenyo. Does yeah. he offer you perhaps something that other players in the squad don't? Is he a different kind of threat to opposition teams? Well, he's, he's pace and power. He's um, unpredictable. He's a young player, again. Uh, so he's, uh, he's learning uh, all the time. But I like, I really like Antoine. I think he's a 
is um, he has the type of uh, profile, if you like, which is geared towards the modern game, and that is uh, pacey, power, um, unpredictable. Um, you know, and some of the go- uh, two of the goals he scored last year were were when he closed down goalkeepers. Were uh, he got rewards for his appetite to work, which is good, and uh, it's the type of player I like. And on Saturday, are you playing bottom of the table derby or a derby side who, but for the points deduction, would have picked up 22 points this season? Yes, interesting observation by you. It is, uh, we're playing the side that's currently at the bottom for non-football reasons. And, uh, and that's, you know, I, I, I don't take any pleasure from seeing any football club in that position, uh, especially a... Uh, a, a club like Derby County who have a, a very big and loyal fan base um, uh, in some ways maybe that it's the situation uh, allows their players to, to play with a bit of freedom um, uh, but yeah they, they, they can be they, they've got some good players they've got some really good players they've got experience at the back um, two veterans who who I know pretty well, um, and yeah, forwards who can create uh, really good goal scoring opportunities. So we, we have to be mindful of the fact that uh, it, it doesn't matter who we play, we have to make sure first and foremost that, uh, that our own game's in order. And as last week proved, um, you know, the contrast between our performance against Stoke and the performance against Sheffield United, the, the fluctuation's too big. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've said to the players today, I'm, I, I don't, you know, I don't care whether they're young and inexperienced. There is an expectation that if they're in the side, they have to, they have to, um, they have to be able to perform, which is, sounds maybe a bit heavy on them, but, uh, no, it, it's because I believe in them and I believe that they are good enough to, to perform at this level. And uh, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully some of our players will gain from the disappointment um, of last of the last game at uh, Sheffield United. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Cheers. Just, just on the injuries, Nigel, George yep. Tanner, um, we have an update on him. I know you said it was a couple of weeks. Yeah, he's, making, still the case. He's, he's making progress out on the grass today. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's making progress. Mm. Okay. So hopefully this, he'll, be, week, he'll be back in contention uh, in, yeah, be, be, before Christmas. Yeah. Okay, oh, okay, good stuff. Um, has there been a sort of a prime area of focus this week in training in relation to... Anything that happened on Sunday that particularly displeased you? Yes, yeah, there has. Yeah, two things in particular. Um, look, I mean, one of the big things that we have to rectify is our lack of creativity and open play. I mean, that's something which remains a, um, a a problem for us in terms of creating opportunities. We're uh, we're expecting strikers to at the moment to. Um, we, we, we're not providing goal scoring situations which is uh, something that yeah we're working very hard to, to try and rectify but uh, and of course our our communication and compactness in, in, in midfield and as a team as well so we've got to be you know those those things let us down in particular against um, against Sheffield United but uh I think the un- the underlying problem during that game was our decision making. I mean, we we made poor decisions in possession where we could have. I mean, if you look at the the goals that we conceded, they are they're not good goals, uh, and and uh, players not taking responsibility for uh, in in. Uh, what is a, a game situation, and that's that's, dis- that's a disappointing uh, observation to have to make. But uh, but look, the, the the most important thing is we 
we get back working at it. Um, and I think it's important we, especially when we play at home, that we play with, uh, yeah, we play with a um, an aggression in terms of how we try and take the game to our opponents. And I think that's something that is, uh, you know, we've not scored anywhere near as enough uh, enough goals at home, and uh, it makes it really uh, quite a problem to win games when you when you're not really creating that many opportunities so that's something that is um, yeah that's we know that we have to improve at that really to to give ourselves better chances of winning games the, the, the communication you speak about mm. is that a byproduct of having so many younger players well the team because they're naturally the communication might not be as good that doesn't necessarily always work actually I mean I, I okay. uh, we, we were talking there are good communicators, you know, and, and, and whether players um, are good communicators when they're young players, it, you know, it doesn't, we, we don't necessarily have uh, a lot of voc vocal players, vocal leaders, um, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't generalise and say that's, that's something to do with age. And I think it'd be very easy to use that as a, as a, not an excuse, but as a, as a, a mitigating cir <laughs> circumstances. But look, the players who were selected, they're there on merit and whether they are young and inexperienced is one thing, but they're selected because um, sometimes we need to and sometimes they're there because we think they're the best player to be there. But um, I, I try not to make too many allowances uh, in that regard because I think then that, that is almost looking for uh, an excuse, and I think what we have to do is harness the the benefits of having younger players in the side, and that is um, uh, energy, enthusiasm, um, a bit of unknown, the unknown factor, which uh, you know we, we've got players who will definitely get better through um, earning their spurs, so to speak, in, in the first team environment. So, you know. Uh, at the moment, we have in midfield a number of our senior players currently n not available because of you know because of injury. But it was it's been good to have um, both Andy King and Matty James training with the team today in particular uh, because they're good coaches as well, um, and so the younger players will benefit through. Uh, either playing with them on match days or training with them, so um, we we are at this we are where we are at the moment, and and sometimes players have to play through difficult periods, and uh, if it means that young players have to do that, then fine. But based on obviously Nathan Baker's situation, yeah, um, um, I would assume Rob may come into the team on Saturday. I'm sure you're not going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you mentioned well deducted <laughs> you, yeah I mean yeah, exactly. you, you, you sorry uh, oh yeah sorry right. sorry no, I was a bit of a delay yeah. um, you mentioned Rob's had to sort of play himself back into form a bit yeah. what, what, what was missing from his game did you feel fitness yeah from his illness he was you know from when he was out he was ill he's he's struggled to get that um, sharpness back and uh, you have to remember he's quite young as well, you know. And having a step up from from you know a lower league side into into the championship is not necessarily a, a, an easy step as well. So you know, but I know it's going up one division, but but he's had a he's had a um, quite an interesting um, if you like career path so far, and. Uh, I've worked with plenty of players who, who um, continually develop, you know, at different levels, but plateau at some point, and and it's unfortunate if you have two or three players plateauing in terms of their um, current form. If they, <laughs> if it's if it's synced, if it happens at the same time, so. Uh, but I try and look at individuals as. Uh, in isolation as well, and I think Rob's had a, a generally a very positive start to his career with us. 
and uh, and I know that he'll get better. But in terms of the fitness side, he, you know, he's he, he's he's not found um, coming back as probably as straightforward as um, as we would like or he would like. Just uh, j- just finally, you, yeah. you mentioned before kind of Wayne Rooney's role at Derby, and you yeah. kind of admired his conduct. Um, yeah. I mean, what's, what's the, how's he kind of what's he done as a manager that's kind of impressed you uh, the most? I think more than anything, just got on with the job. Uh, you know, I've not heard any. I, I've not, not that I sort of uh, actively look at what other managers are saying, but. Um, uh, I, I think really, um, he's he's just really continued to to get on with the job, work with his players, and 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 try and get the the best outcome every time they've gone on the field. So uh, sometimes that's all you can do. But but actually, it's I, I say it in a way where I know I, actually that's quite a hard thing to do sometimes. So. Um, we know we'll have a, a, a tough game at the weekend, and uh, yeah, they, they they have some good players. Great stuff. Thanks, Nigel. Okay. Apologies for the time. No, no, no worries at all.